You're welcome. It's, it's thir Thursday. Thursday. What, what's October the October 13th. 13th. Tomorrow's <laughs> Friday, and that's the weekend. Very good. That's, how, that's, that's how it works. That is how it works. Huge news. Well, first of all, we have a special guest. First of all, we have a really special yeah. guest. Jenna Lee Green is here from the Marvelous Wonderettes. We'll Loved do, her we'll for years. Loved uh, her forever. But there's big, big news. Big news. Yes. War Paint. War, War Paint, Paint is coming to Broadway. The war is uh, gone. Beth and I got to go see this we show. Did. We did. At the Goodman. Mm -hmm. We had a great time. Two time Tony winner, Patty Lapone. Two, two, two time Tony two, 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 two times two, four. Two, they each have two already. Christine Ebersol. Ebersol Lapone playing. Uh, Helena honey, Rubenstein. Yes. That's Patty Lapone. Yes. And Elizabeth Arden. Elizabeth Arden, not Elizabeth. Makeup. What do we keep saying? Eve Arden? I don't know. No, Elizabeth. we don't say that. Don't we say Elizabeth Arden yeah. playing. Makeup Titans, Titans, Titans of the Beauty World. Yeah, and it's sort and, of it's, uh, it spans rivals. over what like it spans like thirty years or something. It's yeah, it's yeah, fantastic. it's really interesting. Uh, we loved it. We absolutely we loved time. it. We got to see uh, La Lapone afterwards. La Lapone. Uh, but yeah, this is this is Michael Greif, uh, Scott Frankel, Michael Corey, Doug Wright. The, the they, Grey Gardens team. Yeah, they did Grey Gardens. Obviously, Christine Eversole won a Tony Award for Grey Gardens. I mean, one of them um, won for Tonys. Uh, this is super exciting. This is at the Nederlander Theater starting March 7th. So wow. get ready for the Tony races because yeah. it's on, people. Uh, Ewan Martin, speaking of Tonys, Tony nominee Ewan Martin. Yes, from we, Taboo. We loved him ever since Taboo. That's how Taboo. we, that's how we, we say, say it. Taboo. Taboo. That's how you're supposed to say it. He's going to be Hedwig. I know. That's so on perfect. On the road. How awesome. Perfect. So yeah, Darren Chris is doing like the LA San Francisco engagements, and then we were wondering who was going to take over. Yeah. And now we know it's you and Martin. So he starts November 29th in San Diego. Congratulations! It's, it's very exciting. Very exciting. Uh, Carrie Compare. I just got a, a lesson on how to say her name. She is the new Sophia. But she was a church lady, right? Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, she's she church, is a church lady. lady. Right. Today she's a church lady. So we know. Yeah, we heard her voice on that stage. But Sophia's a church lady too. I mean, they're all church ladies over at the color purple. Okay. But Sophia, <laughs> uh, yeah. So Danielle Brooks is leaving November thirteenth, and then Carrie will officially take over on the fifteenth for That's the last two months of the run. Amazing. Yeah. That's so amazing. I always love when they like promote within. That's promote exciting. Within. Uh, Gary Busey, super random. Speaking of Donald Trump, Gary Busey uh, is going to be in Perfect Crime, which is literally on our block. Right? It's on our, he's on the same block as us. Uh, which is a long playing a serial killer off Broadway play, or so it's it been running like seventy eight years. Beth and I, we've never, never seen, seen it. it. <laughs> we've never seen, never been invited, never seen it. Gary, but maybe Gary Busey will get us there. I love that, and, and I didn't also, know there were more than one person in it. Actually. And it, it makes me want to bring up the fact that Lorenzo Lamas is also in the Fantastics on the same block. It's just that's not really interesting news in any way, but that's okay. I don't know what's happening. There's a lot of interesting casting. So he's here for Thanksgiving, November twenty first to December fourth. Gary Spend Busey, Turkey Day with live Gary on Busey. stage. I can almost guarantee it's a must see, and that you'll have a good time. Almost guaranteed. That sounds like something you can take it to the bank. If you live in London, you want to be in Hamilton. Uh, there's an open call. So go to that, but it's not for another year. I mean, the show is in another year, so I guess they're going to rehearse them for a year. I don't know. There's an open call, but the show's not actually coming until next October. Correct. Uh, anyway, uh, do you know about this guy? Dario Fo. Yeah. So this is Nobel like Nobel Prize winning playwright, Italian mm -hmm. playwright. Uh, he was 90 years old and he passed away, and he's most famous for the accidental death of an anarchist, right. which featured what two-time Tony winner on Broadway? Patti Lapone. Oh, look at you tying it all together. Mm -hmm. Not the same thing as the movie that uh, Gina Davis won an Oscar for. No. The Accidental Tourist. No. Uh, 17 again, the musical is still in the works. That, that, so that, you know, we heard about that last year. Uh, Darren Chris, Tara Lauterman, Leslie Kritzer, Andy Mantis, they've all been involved in the past. There's another workshop happening. It's the guys who wrote First Date are doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Jenna Lee Green's applauding for them. They're her friends. I love <laughs> They're her they're her friends. Yay. Jenna Lee Green has a lot of friends. Uh, she's friends with everyone. Uh, Max von Essen just, just closed. Um, An American in Paris. And now he's going to do a play, Yours Faithfully, Off-Broadway. This is interesting. It's a play that was published in 1933 but never produced before. Cool. And it's about the cl behind the closed doors of an open marriage. Mm. That's exciting. Uh, there are photos of the Rockettes, who are very pretty and kick really high. <laughs> that, that show starts November 11th. They were in rehearsal. They did a rehearsal event today. Mm -hmm. Beth, you interviewed Mark Brokaw. I did. The director of Heisenberg, and Heisenberg is opening tonight. Yeah. Uh, starring Mary Louise Parker and Dennis Arndt. And Mark Brokaw, has, this is his third time working with Mary Louise Parker, so he talks about that. It's cool how the seating and is And he talks at about how they reconfigured 
uh, the Friedman Theater to look almost like their off-Broadway space with, with, I'm doing this so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Seats on two sides. Seats on two sides. And he explains why he chose to do that. Uh, if you don't know how to do the time warp, we have a, an exclusive video teaching you how. You should know that by now. I get you gearing know. up for Rocky Horror, which is on next Thursday, the 20th, on Fox. Uh, there's a third episode of our vlog, Bronx Bullet. And there's also an interview with Stephen Ashfield, who is a Brit. Who We don't he's get that many Scott Brits in the Book of Mormon. He's, he's Scottish. I'm sorry. He he's was, Scottish. He be accurate, you know. But he won an Olivier. He did. For doing Book yes. of Mormon and he's in done London. loads of things in the West End, but this is his Broadway debut. And now, and we have a fresh face interview with him. He's super and, cute. Uh, I'm out. You're because, out. Uh, because Jenna Lee Green is here, you guys. Here. So Ladies go ahead, and gentlemen, Jenna Lee Green. Yay! The crowd goes wild. Are we? I mean, the the things are very slick at all. I'm so, not feeling so slick. So quick and fast. You like the loose table? I do. Hello. Hi. I have so many things to talk to you about. You do? You do so much. You've done <gasps> so much. <laughs> First of all, you're the original Mean Girl. That's what you I'm You all know told. that, right? <laughs> <laughs> we so had a big explain. anniversary, which makes me feel really right, old, so but we were children. So. so when you were like 2.5 years old, yeah, like, oh, you, you know, played like Libby. I'm Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. You were so mean. Ah, uh, I know. But now you're, you're all grown up. So you're grown up. All grown up. <laughs> Which is so No, but did you, did, have, did you have a little reunion? Um, well, we didn't actually have um, a, a reunion, however, uh, through a twist of fate, Mel Scovell, who's the woman who created the show, it specifically created my character, she happened to be in New York for a few weeks, and so... Uh, she and her husband came to the Marvelous Wonderettes. Uh, her That's husband so actually nice. was Mr. Lee for the night, and I didn't even set it up. It just happened that way. Uh, that was where their seats were. So he got to come <laughs> up on stage, and so it was really nice to to see her and reconnect. We haven't seen each other in years, and we went to dinner and caught up. Uh, yeah, it was great. Up. That's it was great. awesome. So let's talk about the Marvelous Wonderettes. Okay. You play a nerdy girl. Would you say a nerdy girl? Oh, so nerdy. So nerdy. Cindy Lou, right? Yeah. No, mean girl. Oh, mean nerd. No, not a nerd. Not a nerd. Mean not girl? A nerd. Just a mean, mean girl. What's going on? I was joking. What's going on? I thought you? you were joking. <laughs> no, I was talking about Libby. Chesler. Chesler? Yeah. I'm, she I'm wasn't a nerd well. either. She was, I'm always she was just mean. mean. I'm always yeah. the mean girl. Straight kids. Mean. Always. It's okay. I don't get it's it. It's okay. Why? You look really nice. Thank you for you saying that. You have a nice face. Thank you for saying that. I don't know. You know, it's fun. Who doesn't like to, to be mean in their pretend life and then you get it out? And you can for those of, of us with pretend <laughs> lives, you can not be everyone really has nice one. in your real life because you're always trying to compensate and make sure everybody knows you're not mean. Okay. Wait, we have people have questions. People have oh, questions. They do. But before we do that, Wicked. We have to talk about Wicked. First yes. of all, what's going on with you? Because your name is Green. Mm -hmm. You are in Wicked. Mm -hmm. You're in Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Do you see where I'm going with this? My, yeah, seriously. Life, just like mean girls, witches, bitches, green. Like, it's all tied in. So I suppose that that means that all of the things I've done were meant to be. Yeah, they all sort of tie together in a little something. In a way. little Halloween something. I don't Put know, but you don't wear green in Marvelous Wonderettes. They I all do have a color. not. I know. I'm pink. Mm -hmm. Hot pink, mm -hmm. to be exact. That's actually a mean girl color, hot pink. I've decided just now. I just decided that just now. <laughs> that is, yeah. Well, out of all the colors, we've got blue, we've got green, we have pink, and we have orange. So, for people who haven't seen the show, can you explain it a little bit? Yeah. Um, you know, this is a revival. So the show was here. I, th I think it opened eight years ago mm -hmm. at the West Side Theater, and uh, started years before that in Los Angeles. But I had never seen the show, so I knew of it. Sounded like fun, but uh, had never seen it. So it was. Pretty cool to come in, I think, um, not having any experience with the show, so it's fresh and fun. Uh, the show's about four girls uh, at their high school prom, still playing a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in the past, it's in the 50s. Exactly. I mean, everybody, I think, seemed a lot more mature. I look at pictures of my mom from when she was 15, 14. Yeah, they do look older. And it's a style. Yeah, again. she absolutely. It's the hairdos. Um, I don't know. Yeah, which she looks very young now, so it, you know. But, uh, aging backwards, the baby boom. <laughs> exactly. Aren't we all aging backwards? I hope so. Let's I think hope so. For that. I yes. Think so. Uh, so the first act is set in 1958 at their high school prom where they are asked last minute to be the entertainment. 
So they're kind of like a girl group. group. Yes. And they've prepared all of these numbers. So the show uh, is all, it's, I, I wouldn't say necessarily a jukebox musical, but mm. it's all of the music is of that, uh, era. of that era. So the first act is all music from the 1950s. Songs everybody would know, Mr. Sandman, Stupid Cupid, all the fun stuff, Lollipop. And then the second act takes place 10 years later at their high school reunion, where they have reunited. So it's 68, different vibe. 68, totally different vibe. Our lives have taken some turns, some twists and turns, and you get to know uh, us and what's been happening in the past 10 years. And then we get to do things like sing Son of the Preacher Man. <sighs> I mean, <laughs> but... Go on YouTube and just listen to this woman's voice <laughs> because it is gorgeous. You are gorgeous. Kind. So now we also have to talk about something that you're very often associated with, which is Bear. Yes. You were really with it from the beginning, weren't from you? From the beginning. Um, I was singing karaoke in Los Angeles. For fun? For fun. Just okay. out with some friends one night singing karaoke and um, Damon Interbartolo who sadly is not with us anymore, but he and uh, uh, John Hartmere, the other co-writer, and I believe Kristen Henge was there as well. I'm not 100% positive on that, but uh, they were there. What were you singing, Son of a Preacher Man? I, was, I, I have no idea what I was singing, but they were looking for a girl to play this, you know, kind of troubled teenage girl in this musical that they'd written, and I ended up doing... Uh, just a reading, you know, a one night. You got discovered by them at karaoke. Yeah, essentially. Go sing essentially. Karaoke I mean, and don't get a private. I, room. I had already, you know, I'd already been working for a long time in Los Angeles, of but I had kind of taken a, a step aside from musical theater, which I'd always, always, always loved. And I just, I met these guys, and they invited me to come do this reading with them, and then that was that. I did every um, reading workshop. I flew to New York a couple of times before the show ended up making it here mm -hmm. to do work on it more, and then um, did the production in Los Angeles, and then moved here to a true cult hit. A true cult I hit. I know. It's such a special show. It really was. You know, all of its imperfections, and and I think that's what makes it perfect, because it, it. I don't even know if the show was ever really finished. So we have some questions. Billy wants to know, would you like to return to Broadway to start in a new musical about Pat Benatar? And that's a real thing. <laughs> that's a real thing. Pat, there's going to be a Pat Benatar musical? Oh. Apparently. Would anyone say no to that? I mean, no. yes, absolutely. <laughs> what I, what awesome. Does she want a karaoke? <laughs> <Pat Benatar? laughs> I feel like we should go to a karaoke bar right after this. <laughs> Love is a battlefield. <laughs> yeah, I think you're ready. Oh, you're ready. that sounds well, cool. I didn't know that was happening. Hair and you're all set. Well, you know, wig it. Wigs. Wig it. <laughs> I cut my hair, please. And you did wig it for a while, didn't you? I did. You did the um, first national tour? Yep, I did the first national tour, which was amazing. As Nessa Rose. As Nessa Rose, because we took, um, you know, we were taking the show all across the country for the most of the people. This was the first time they were ever getting the did chance. Did they give you chair lessons? That chair is tough. <gasps> <laughs> the chair is tough. The chair is tough. Um, you know, I, I spoke with Michelle Federer, who originated the role, and mm -hmm. she gave me a lot of great advice. Um, and just you speaking with PT, you got to sit up straight because the, the inclination is to do this. You got to kind of sit up straight or you will hurt yourself. Here's um, a question to ponder yeah. as we approach Wicked Day, which is October 30th. Oh, it's because I know that. Is Nessa Rose a mean girl? Um, or are we going to just reserve that for Glinda? I don't think she was born mean. Oh. <laughs> I think hmm. that she's a sad girl. And I that think that she has had a lot of things happen to her that have, you know, we, it's easy to turn bitter towards certain things, but I think if, if things escalate in your life and, and you really do feel alone and feel um, helpless, that it's easy to turn to anger. And if you mix anger and power, I think... That, I think we all know what that be, is. I yeah. think that can be in headlines. So I, yeah. I think I, I, I enjoyed... So my, I mean, I, I did the show three companies, a little over two and a half years, uh, which is nothing now compared to how long so many people have Stay done the show. Have yeah. stayed in the show. Yeah. I know I have so many friends who the two and a half years is nothing. <laughs> I was in it for five. I was in it for eight. Um, but uh, getting that arc, I always thought of Nessa as more. It's, just not, it's not much of a singing role. Yeah. So I loved the beautiful. Um, just arc as an actor, yeah, the going from the, the young sweet girl into... Chris loved you in Wicked. Thank Thanks, you, Chris. Chris. 
Um, Lynn wants to know, what was the most difficult song in One Rats to get the harmonies just right? Oh, every single one. This show, <laughs> it's so cute, it's so sweet, it's so fun. I had no clue how hard it was going to be to learn. Um, I didn't have a ton of experience with some really intense four-part harmonies. You're carrying your part alone, so if you mess it up, there is no one who's also That's doubling, your, doubling right. your part. So we had to work a lot to really find our blend and find our balance, and that's something that one person does not stick out on their own. Four people have to blend together. Mm -hmm. um, I love that, that with the exception of one song in the show, we sing in every single song. So we're constantly getting to sing together, but also be there to back up the soloist. Amazing. We have to get going, but we have mm -hmm. One more question from Scott. This yes. is going back to Wicked. Okay. This is a really tough question. Uh -oh. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. Why have we never heard of a witch from the South? <laughs> I'm speechless. I'm speechless, Scott. That's an excellent question. That is a very good question. Um, you might you might need to send this. this we might um, need a solo show from you. Oh. Oh, is that my 54 Below show? I mean, <gasps> yeah, let's just dream big. Let's just dream big. <laughs> That is something to ponder. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. And thank you, Jennifer, for coming in. Thanks for having me. We'll see you on the Marvelous One. Yes, come, 42nd Street.